Good morning, weekend warriors and Saturday DIYers. We have here a 2018 Toyota RAV4, and today we installed the Reese hitch system, the class three onto it, along with the Reese plug and play four wire flat adapter. The Reese, Reese instructions are pretty good. Especially the hitch is pretty simple. We'll cover it real quick though, just to show you. So you got two bolts right there. What I did was I dropped the exhaust hanger here and dropped the exhaust hanger there, which allows the exhaust to hang low enough to get to those bolts with an impact gun and get that slid in. On this side over here, you have this little plastic panel that sits under there like that. It has two of these little clips like this. These are the body clips where you pull out the center gently and it comes out on the front side of this. It's held in with a 10 millimeter. And then this bolts in here and here. You have to drop the factory tow hook to get the other bolt holes in, but then you put these bolts back in and the factory tow hook goes back into place. Super simple. Honestly, they said 20 minutes. I think that took about 10. Now, the four wire Reese flat pin tow. First thing, if you're a professional, make sure you put some dielectric on there for your customer, okay? Um, this is, they did, Reese did a good job with the instructions for having to be black and white and covering multiple vehicles. So, they make it a little bit easier and make this RAV4 specific. So, to go through the body, what I did was, in the spare tire well, there is a huge plug right there. And so, I sliced it, cut it enough to get that four pin flat in there so that the plug sits flat with it in there. I used black silicone liberally and got that to seal back up. You don't want water in your customer spare tire compartment, but that was the easiest and safest way to get that through. And then I used a zip tie pad here to hold it up so that it didn't drag or go anything goofy. And so that should cover that really well for the customer. Now, in here, the connector you're looking for here's your tail light come around black panel the connector you're after is right up in here okay but to get to it you need to pull this black panel off so right here is a Phillips screw right here is a 10 millimeter pop that little cover off right there is a 10 millimeter Right there is a 13 millimeter, and right there is a 10 millimeter. Now this one, the way that this sits back in here, once you get this out, there's a little nipple that sticks out, so the plastic still hangs onto it, so you gotta kinda push the plastic out and away. Then this will fold out enough to get this out. I highly recommend, because there's push pins back here, I pull this rubber stuff out of the way real quick. And then you can see in there there's push pins and where to just gently pry to get your push pins. The rubber sets back in real easy. Same thing on the right side, the screw holes and everything are identical. Phillips here, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Now this is after you remove all of the junk out of here. So just pick up the whole center panel thing pull it out of here, get it out of the way. The rear fascia piece, which is what sits here, it's all on clips. Just be gentle. Again, I pull this rubber molding out of the way so I can see where the clips are and pop it. And then the spare tire jack, the only thing that really holds it in are these two push pins here. They're just standard push pin style. What I did was I mounted it here in the corner with a screw there's plenty of hollow space back here and make sure that you do not ground it to here because plastic metal even though there's some thread it will eventually fail run your own stinger to here and you'll be set and ready to go 
Now there's a 12 volt wire that Reese makes you run from the battery. You probably can run it from the ignition source or fuse box inside. I ran it from here. It's from the battery as recommended. Up and over. I did not use their connector because if you live in corrosion country, you know that using an open end connector is more corrosion. So I use a shrink tube style connector on this to help keep the corrosion out. Run it up and over and through here. Now, let me grab my flashlight. Sorry. This is going to be fun to try and show. To come through the grommet in here. Back up in here is the grommet, okay, for all of the wires. And I'm going to try and hold the flashlight and this. Hold in there. Okay, so in there, right there closest to the brake pedal and the center of the vehicle is a hole that's in the grommet already. You got to steer, still pierce it, but it's there. I think it was for like a brake cable or some other item. You can push through there with, I use a coat hanger. Some of my friends hate me for doing that, but push through there with a the coat hanger and then suck it back through that hole that made that real easy because it was a lot thinner than anywhere else from there the rest of this car is just snapped together run it down here unsnap this panel you can push the wire down under through here pop this panel up and feed it and then this was the toughest part was back through here past the seat now what I did was I fed it as far as I could underneath the panel. You can get your fingers under there and feed it up under there and believe it or not you can get it far enough. But when you get back to here it became a little goofy. So what I discovered was when you lift this up there's an additional storage area. Take these two Phillips screws out and it pops up and all of a sudden you've got a ton of room back there to fish the wire back. Put it underneath here, run it around and drop it down. So. The 12 volt wire really wasn't that hard to run in this vehicle and uh, I wouldn't go underneath it. I looked at it originally for that direction, but I'd stay inside the cabin. The hardest part is that grommet. So, done, complete, not that hard to do guys.